All right, we're back. We're on page seven, note 16. We're going to evaluate some definite integrals, fundamental theorem. You can do u substitution and change the bounds. You could uh, just find an antiderivative and not change the bounds. It's up to you. I'm going to do them in the way that I think is, I don't know, probably fastest, to be honest. Uh, so here I'm thinking if u is tangent, then du is secant squared. The derivative tangent is secant squared. So this is like perfect. So then that's going to be 1 half tangent squared of x, and we're going to go from 0 to pi over 4, 1 half. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1, squared is 1, tangent of 0 to 0, 1 half. So do your substitutions however you want to do them. I'm just going to kind of like go for it. Uh, if u is equal to cosine, then du is negative sine of x dx. So I need a negative. And then uh, 3 is just like constant multiple. Uh, so I have like u squared, so I get one third. Three and one third cancel, so I end up with cosine cubed of x. Um, and I'm going from two pi to three pi. That's negative. The cosine of three pi is the same as the cosine of pi. So it's negative one cubed is negative one minus uh, the cosine of two pi is the cosine of zero, which is one. Um, so I get Negative, so I get positive two. I don't know if that makes sense to me, but I, I'm pretty sure it's right. Two negative, yeah, I think I think so. Like positive one, and then you would get minus. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm I'm concerned that I messed up by factoring this negative out. So then it was plug in three pi, you get the cosine of three pi is negative one, cubed is negative one, minus plug in two pi, cosine of zero is one, cubed is one, that, so you get negative two and then negative. I think it's right. I think it's right. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, I guess. What do we got going on here? Um, so first of all, like these radicals made me think that there's like a tangent involved, but I think there's not a tangent involved. Should I actually show work on this? Potentially? I'm going to do an indefinite integral. I'm just going to do 4x radical x squared plus 1. You know what? I'll do, I'll do the whole thing. We're doing u substitution, everybody. Buckle up. All right, here we go. u is x squared plus 1. 1 half du is x dx. So the 4, we're just going to factor out and not really worry about it. Um, if x is radical 3 then u is 3 plus 1. If x is negative radical 3, then u is, oh, hello, what's happening here? Is this an odd function? This is, this is an odd function. Oh my gosh. Uh, look at what our u substitution does to us. So there's a 4 and a 1 half, so you get 2. Uh, the integral from 4 to 4, that's crazy, of du over uh, the square root of u. Or something like yeah you get that um this is definitely zero but a better observation would have been that for if f of x gotta be on the lookout for this this is so it was a good move when i decided for uh for like kind of laziness uh when i decided to change everything f of negative x is negative 4x over article x squared plus one which is the negative of f of x Odd. Be on the lookout for odd functions because the uh, odd function symmetric bounds, that's what I should have looked out for. I saw the radical threes and I was like, tangent. I should have seen the symmetric bounds and been like, odd, uh, but that didn't happen. All right, this one, I hate these types of problems. Like, I am aware of how they work. I'm going to do a u substitution and I'm going to say that u is, like, I'm going to make u one minus cosine of 3t. Because if I do that, then du, derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of negative cosine of 3t is negative, is positive 3 sine of 3t dt. So 1 third du is sine of 3t dt. And then if x is, or t rather, look at that, changing their variables. If t is pi over 3, then I get one, u is, u is, 
uh, one minus the cosine of pi, so negative one, so you get two. And if t is pi over six, u is one minus the cosine of pi, cosine of pi over two is zero, so one minus, so that. So this whole integral becomes one third, uh, one to two, so u du. So we just integrate it, we get one sixth u squared from one to two. It's like, it's, it seems too easy. One sixth, four minus one is three. I get one half. Isn't that weird? So like my, my inclination, instead of the u substitution is to distribute and then do two separate integrals and then add them together. It's like way less efficient, but it's also what strikes me. So I don't know, you can do what you want. Here, I'm definitely doing a u substitution. Um, although I think it's like pretty perfect. Okay, let's use a marker. One plus radical y. So I'm just gonna find du because it, it looks like it's gonna work out, right? This is gonna be one half y to the negative one half. So it's really one over two root y dy. So we actually have that. This and then this is uh, u. So let's change the bounds and we're basically done. If y is, is four, always do the upper bound first. Do them in the order in which you're gonna put them in. I think that that's like good advice that I do not always follow, but I wish I did. One plus two, three. If y is one, then u is one plus one, which is two. So we get this whole integral just becomes two to three. You get uh, du over u to the second, but let's make that u to the negative second, du. Okay, plus one times the reciprocal, negative, negative u to the negative one, but like flip it, positive exponents there. So we get negative one third minus negative one half, negative one third plus one half, negative two six plus three six, is one sixth. I think I'm gonna check these at the end on the calculator, but you don't need to watch that if you are confident. If you have a disagreement though, all right, symmetric bounds, I'm not getting fooled again. I think this is probably odd. Let's, it's either odd or it could be even, either way that would be helpful. F of R is R radical one minus R squared. F of negative R is negative R radical one minus negative R squared is just R squared again. This is the negative of f of r. This is odd. This is zero. Don't get fooled multiple times in the same video. That's a rule. All right, so I'm typing them in. I guess, uh, you, sorry, you could totally be done if you wanna be done. I like muted, unmuted and then muted my, no, I muted and unmuted myself because I wanna see the microphone thing. It's like, it's out of this world how disconcerting it is to not see it. Integral tangent of x, secant of x squared, x zero to pi over four, one half, we got it. Integral three cosine of x squared, sine of x, two pi to three pi, two, got it. This was the tricky one. I don't know, I mean, it wasn't tricky, but I got tricked by it. Four x square root x squared plus one, comma x, negative square root of three, just square root of three. This is gonna be zero because it's an odd function. Don't spend your time on it. Integral one minus cosine of three x, sine of three x, comma x, pi over six, pi over three, one half. We did all right on these. Integral one over two square root of y, quantity one plus square root of y squared comma y one to four. It's one sixth and then integral, this one should be zero. Uh, x times, I'm using x pretty much. I mean, except for where I use y. Negative one to one, zero because it's odd, don't get fooled. Okay, whew. I don't know, uh, that may have been fast. If that was fast, you can always slow it down. You can always watch it again. 
You could always just do them on your own and compare your answers at the end. Any of those would be good options. So I mean, here, here are the answers to A and B, the answers to C and D. Obviously, you would pause the video here. Um, and the answers to E and F. All right, so we're done with that page. I'll be back in the next video to do some more. So I'll see you there.